Here I've got a nice viewer suggested integral. And so our goal is to find the integral from zero to infinity of x to the minus natural log of x dx. And as we'll see, a couple of nice substitutions will turn this into a well-known integral. So let's start by setting x equal to e to the y. And that substitution pops out because notice we've got the natural log of x here. So if we take the natural log of e to the y, we'll just get y. So let's populate the rest of this integral. So that means that dx is equal to e to the y dy by taking the derivative. Let's notice if x approaches zero from the right, which is what's happening right here, we have y approaching negative infinity. Then furthermore, if we have x approaching infinity, we also have y approaching infinity. Okay, so I think that probably sorts everything out, except for the kind of obvious thing that the natural log of x equals y in this case. Okay, so let's put a box around this. This is a good sort of review of our substitution that we're doing and see what we get. So here we're gonna have now the integral from minus infinity up to infinity because of the bounds of integration changing as we discussed. And then we'll have x, well, let's recall that x became e to the y, so we have e to the y, and then that is going to be raised to the minus natural log of x or minus y power. So we have that, and then dx, like we said, was e to the y dy. So this is what we have going on here. Now, where should we go from here? Well, I think we should probably use exponent rules to simplify this integrand. So that'll give us something like the integral from minus infinity to infinity. And then we'll have e to the minus y squared plus y dy. And from here, I'll see that I have a quadratic in the exponent, but that really points me towards the Gaussian integral. So I'd like to make this look like the Gaussian integral, but that will involve doing some sort of completion of the square. So let's maybe do that over here. So let's take this minus y squared plus y and factor a minus sign out. That gives us y squared minus y. Then we need to add something in here so that we complete the square. So that means we need to take half of this and square it. So we'll add one quarter here, but that means we need to subtract a quarter from the whole thing, but we've got a minus sign here, so that means we really need to add a quarter here. Okay, great. So that gives me the completion of the square, and I can finish that off by writing it as one quarter minus y minus one half quantity squared. Okay, so that allows me to rewrite my integral as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the quarter times e to the minus y minus half squared dy. And I'm going to do one more substitution, although this one maybe isn't quite as necessary because it doesn't really change much. I'll just take my substitution t equal to y minus half. Notice that dt is equal to dy. And furthermore, since my bounds of integration are minus infinity and plus infinity, they will not change. So that'll leave me with something like e to the half, which I can bring out front, and then the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus t squared dt. We've gotten to the famous Gaussian integral. I've done a couple of videos where I evaluated the Gaussian integral. Maybe I'll link one right up here, and then we'll just use that value. This gives me e to the one quarter times the square root of pi but I think it's kind of a little bit nicer to write this in the following format, the square root of pi times the square root of e, where we have that nice nested square root. And that's a good place to stop.